In Florida, hard clam farming has developed into a multi-million dollar industry. However, this industry is built upon a single species, the hard clam, Mercenaria mercenaria. Diversification from a single species may help stabilize and expand the industry. Native species that could be cultured and marketed along with clams are logical options. The Sunray Venus clam, Macrocalista nimbosa, is similar to a hard clam and was previously the target of a commercial fishery in Florida. It is an attractive clam distributed from South Carolina to Florida and the Gulf states. In the 1960s to early 1970s, unusually dense populations found near St. Joe Bay and the Florida Panhandle were commercially harvested and processed in nearby plants, as evidenced in this historical photograph. However, the small size of fishing grounds limited the development of the fishery. The goal of the project was to evaluate, demonstrate, and develop aquaculture of the Sunray Venus clam as a new species to diversify and expand the shellfish culture industry in Florida. This video highlights only spawning and early culture of the Sunray Venus clam. Adult clams were collected from intertidal sandbars where natural assemblages were noted. One way to find adults is to locate keyhole-shaped siphon holes or V-shaped spray marks leading from the hole. Digging in the vicinity of the keyhole or the point of the V-shape to a depth of roughly 6 inches would often reveal the clam. A special activity license is required for harvesting and must be obtained through the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Conditioning of sunray venus clams is similar to that of hard clams. A salinity of 28 to 30 parts per thousand, a temperature of 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and adequate microalgae such as isochrysis and catoceris are requirements for this conditioning. One difference noted is that broodstock sunray clams seem to do better in a substrate such as sand or aragonite, whereas hard clams do not need a substrate. Careful maintenance and cleaning is necessary to avoid anaerobic conditions that could harm the clams. Also, temperatures above 86 degrees Fahrenheit should be avoided in order to reduce mortality. Similar to hard clams, spawning of both male and female Sunray Venus clams was accomplished using thermal cycling also called temperature shock. Temperature was increased 10 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit above an ambient temperature of about 70 degrees Fahrenheit for each thermal cycle. Spawning induction can also be assisted by the addition of sperm from dissected males. Once males and females start releasing their sperm and eggs, the animals are transferred to individual containers to continue spawning and to collect their gametes. Only a few milliliters of sperm suspension are needed to fertilize millions of eggs. The unfertilized eggs have a noticeable gelatinous membrane that persists during the early stages of development. On this egg, at about 1 o'clock, you can see the sperm entering the egg which is now considered fertilized. Then. Two polar bodies are expelled, as seen here at 2 o'clock, and cell division begins. The first division produces two unequal sized cells called blastomeres. Development continues with successive cell division in a spiral pattern. Four cells, eight cells, 16 cells, etc., reaching the ciliated blastula stage at about 6 hours.
and then the trochophore stage, which is the first distinct larval stage. The trochophore develops into a beliger larval stage, distinguished by the first traces of the adult clam shell. After about 24 hours, the villager D stage is reached, and the larvae are ready to feed. After fertilization, eggs were placed in culture tanks at densities of 1 to 2 eggs per milliliter. Stocking densities and larval culture conditions followed were similar to those for hard clams. Salinity was maintained at 28 to 35 parts per thousand, temperature between 72 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, and the water was changed daily. Larvae were fed daily isochrysis and catoceros algae to achieve cell densities in the tanks of 50,000 to 100,000 cells per milliliter. The D-stage villager larvae have a noticeable apical tuft, which is the pointy projection. They are now about 130 microns long and can be seen here feeding on microalgae. Healthy larvae exhibit a full stomach, which is a large brown mass inside the shell. Villagers are also distinguished by having a specialized ciliated swimming and feeding structure called a velum. The velum is used to both propel the villager through the water and to capture food particles. Villagers grew rapidly to a length of about 200 to 220 microns, and by day 6 to 9, depending on temperature, they became peaty villagers, exhibiting a muscular, ciliated foot. The peaty villager is the last free-swimming developmental stage before settling into bottom-dwelling juveniles. For setting and post-set culture, PD villagers were stocked at a density of 2,000 to 3,000 individuals per square foot of bottom area. The maximum stocking density has not yet been determined. The planktonic PD villagers metamorphosed to benthic juveniles within a few days after being placed in the setting systems. Microalgae were added once to twice a day to maintain a density of 100,000 to 150,000 cells per milliliter. The setting bins were drained and rinsed with salt water daily or every other day. In one to three months, depending on temperature and feed, clams are ready to be sieved and moved to a land-based nursery to continue their growth. In summary, Sunray Venus clams were successfully spawned and reared to post-set seed. As seen in this video, Sunray Venus clams responded well to spawning and hatchery culture methods similar to those used for hard clams. At the conclusion of the study, the post-set seed that were produced were transferred to land-based nurseries and then to commercial lease sites for further culture. <laughs>